For quite some time, we inside JetBrains thought that hot reloading UI applications like Done and Flutter is almost impossible. Google maintains its own separate Dart VM for running debug builds, hot reloading being one of its dedicated features. So how could Kotlin ever compete in this regard without having a similar VM with comparable features? This was the status quo for quite some time, and I also believed this to be true. Six weeks ago, I was uh, thinking of new topics to create videos on, and I thought about presenting some framework-level approaches to supporting Hot Reload. This will be fun, I thought, quick and easy, I thought, a good opportunity to teach basics about JVM class loading and Gradle, I thought, one Saturday of work. Six weeks later, here's what I got. Short disclaimer, the following recording is uncut for obvious reasons. Whilst live coding was done in a single take, I hope you would agree it is still fair that my commentary over it is not. The project Joan is a very simple composed multi-platform project. Other than the optimized non-skipping groups feature flag, the project applied the experimental hot reload plugin. And it is using local builds of Kotlin and the Compose compiler. We start by launching the app using the run gutter inside the IDE. Alongside this untitled app window, a dev run window also opens, which provides additional logs and controls over the application it is recompiling. We can start by editing the app composable. The rules demand to start with a hello world, so let there be a hello world text. Since no layout was specified, the hello and world will overlap. Wrapping both texts into a column should fix this. Rule number two. Every new technology has to showcase building a to-do app. So let's introduce a new class to-do, which shall store the state of a single to-do item. The demo would be empty for quite some time without us providing some way of creating a new to-do. Creating a new to-do input composable with a text field sounds fairly straightforward. Pressing command plus S to save will immediately show the text field in our app. As a next step, a button has to be added, which allows the user to add a new to-do item. With the empty on click, clicking this button will not surprise us. The to-do app needs a list of all known to-do items. So using remember and a mutable state list of seems like a reasonable choice here. Time to create a new to-do list composable, which will display all to-do items as a lazy column. As the list of to-dos is still empty, we might want to add a little title saying all to-dos. Maybe not that large though. Time to actually create the to-do item when a user clicks on this add button. This can be implemented by forwarding the newly created to-do using a lambda. Clicking the add button now actually adds the entry to the to-dos, which will be then displayed by the to-do list. However, the individual to-do items uh, are displayed a little bit too small. Obviously, when we change the size, we can do this without losing any state. Making the text bold should also not be a problem. As a final exercise, we can try making the to-do item clickable, toggling the completed value and displaying the to-do with a strike through once completed. Oh wait, seems like we have a bug. A new to-do should not show up with a strike through. Seems like we got the condition wrong. Told you that this was live. Correcting the mistake immediately takes effect.
Introducing Project Firework. Within JetBrains, I will push this implementation of Compose Hodge Load forward. It is planned that the open source ecosystem department will decide about the future of the project after initial experiments are finished and the technical feasibility has been properly evaluated. The current state of the project requires solving very interesting challenges in a wide area of technical subsystems, integrating with build tools such as Gradle and the Kotlin Gradle plugin, changing the naming scheme of lambdas generated by the Compose compiler, and reading and transforming bytecode for the JetBrains runtime. If you're interested in such technical topics, then feel free to subscribe to this channel as upcoming videos will explain the path that got me here and the current prototype. Starting simple with creating new class loaders to finally using the JetBrains runtime and modifying the Compose compiler. Thanks for joining and as always, have fun with Kotlin.